Oh, there we go. I just had to need some help for a second. Okay. Well, just sit on it. Yeah. I don't have the one that I got there. Okay. Thank you. And then can I turn it around? Is it that one or no? Yeah, it should have a. Oh, can you not? Be, oh, it's okay. It doesn't matter. I'll stick it up here, and then it should be able to. <laughs> Can it? Yeah, I kind of have you. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Darn it. This is what I do in my classes, so technically it should work. It's just kind of you and Katie in it. That's, is that okay? Mm -hmm. Well, when you come here, you'll be Yeah, well, me too. We're focused. Yes, yeah, can, can you tell us a little bit about the experiences yourself as growing up and what were your experiences were going on point? Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah. You know, when did you start? What, what exercises did you do? What were some of your experiences? Um, I practiced a lot, a lot. Even just like stuff that I do at the bar, strengthening exercises, like each dancer in class knows what we're working for. And I did that a, a lot to help strengthen myself. And when I got on point, you know, we had to we had to have certain things down to, you know, make sure that we're ready to do that. And we did lots of like, even right in the beginning, you don't dance a lot on point. It's about just getting your feet coordinated and stuff like that. Finding a pair of pointy shoes that fit you is really hard. You no, know, most of us have been through, you know, 50 different times before you find the right one. And then they stop making it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then they stop making it. Um, and that's, you know, and I ended up going to a boarding school where you're on point every day. So, you know, you're, my feet still have to go cut and back, but, you know, they're not pretty, they hurt, but it's, it's fun. But it also hurts. I think a lot of people expect, like I've heard different kids come and say they went to Legro and, oh, well, they hurt, so we took them back. No, they're, they're gonna hurt. <laughs> it's gonna hurt your probably the rest of your life. You know what I mean? But it's just trying and working and taking the you know initiative of like yourself and myself to, okay, this hurts, but I really, really wanna do this. This is something that I wanna, I really wanna do with my life. It's something that I'm excited about and it's something that I want to learn about. And it's about, you know, I always, you want to come to class with the best attention. Like, you know, yeah, we all have our days where you're like, you know, but it's like still being there and wanting to do that. And I think that taught me like also a lot of discipline growing up is like, you know, listening and taking the corrections. Like corrections are good. You know, like at first you think you're like, why are they picking on me? But then it comes to the point where you're like, you know, we give you corrections because we want to help you. And we only want to make you better. And that took me a really long time to learn, unfortunately. But, like, because I could be nasty, you know. And then I found out that, like, it's just, it was just to help me and make me a better person. And I'm really thankful for that. So, like, growing up and everything, like I said, I practiced a lot. I did what, you know, I was told to do. And I just worked really hard, as hard as I could, to make things work and get where I am. So, yeah. And how old She would work as really, really hard, but she was very, I mean, I take a, she was a really excellent educator. She mm -hmm. could be very, very strict, but she was a really excellent yeah. dance educator. She would always, she would keep informed, and she when she would put us in point, I remember, like, we would go on and choose. Mm -hmm. Like, it was a couple people went on at the same time when they went Friday, but as a class, so I remember being like, I wasn't the first one to go on point. I mean, I, for my feet, I have to work for, like, every bit I get. I don't have the feet, but that's so, you know, I just had to do that. So, like, not being the first one, so there's an emotional part of it. But, yeah, we went on it two at a time, like, the sixth, seventh grade. And, and then you would watch. She would be like, if you want to, like, get points, she was like, sit, watch a point class. Like, watch the older girls are doing, you know, and then you can see what you're in for. You know, and, like, that would be something that, because then you look at that and you're like, oh, this person's really interested. You can tell that they're you know, really wanting this or taking the initiative to sit there and learn and watch, even if you don't have points, even if your friends are up there, it's about like learning and watching. And like, that was always something that she considered 
something good because like we know that you want that then. Mm -hmm. So about watching something amazing now with the internet is you can like you you can go online and YouTube the Royal Ballet or New York City Ballet mm -hmm. or you know you can go online and YouTube like the best dancers in the world working. So you know in terms of taking you know initiative and uh, you know doing your research and learning everything you can and what watching is so important of course um, and you know just. Yeah, if you're if it's something you're interested in, go you know, go online and Google all those famous dance companies and just take a look at some of the famous dancers and how they're moving and how they're working and it starts to kind of like seep into you, you know, it does. <clears throat> Learning by osmosis. Right, we're keeping like company. I say yeah, like definitely. I mean, I've seen it a lot since we started having the, since we have the Nutcracker. Well, it's like eight years old now or something. Like the kids, I think they just really start to emulate and just grow up a little more quickly as you see the other girls dancing too. Um, to touch back on the foot exercises, yes, and that's, you can be found online too, but there's like, in general for your child, you know, or for your students, they shouldn't practice anything unless their teacher assigns it to them. They can be like, oh, I saw this, what do you think about it? Because if there's just apparatus out there, apparatus, apparatus, can you guys um, you know, things like that, but just, that's what we want to have this conversation open about, like, what should we do? Um, just in my dance class, we have, or in my class, we've been working with a fit of them, so that then, their um, the understanding is that they're working independently on their own, just working on the strengthening, articulating through the foot. Um, but yeah, there's a whole series of exercises that they can go and do, you know, daily. That um, I guess as part of the follow up, or not I guess as part of the follow up for this, we can send out here's a series of things that your child can be working on for this. And then to go back to like the point she's hurting again, that's where like there's a two class minimum. If you throw your point, throw your point to class like once a week. You're not going to get the calluses and all that stuff that you need so that your feet, because the first time, yeah, I mean, me, my, my feet bled a lot because, I mean, we didn't have like 20,000 different points. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I just use yeah. lamb's wool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. And in the gel, it's like, oh, had you're like, you're replaced. No, in fact, you have blood through your lamb's wool. But you have to be, it's part of, you know, the yeah, toughing, toughing of your feet. And that happens, of course, the more you wear punches. And I know it's kind of gross, but it's the reality of it is that you have to. Build it up, so yeah, yeah. Point shoes aren't like a small effort. Like I remember in high school. Well, number one, my parents were so kind. For my birthday one year, they built a dance studio in the basement for me, which is now the laundry room. Um, but <laughs> um, and they even like leveled the floor, which was sweet. But you know, by the time they leveled it, I couldn't touch the ceiling. <laughs> um, but so you know, I remember like spending. I would spend Friday nights at home sewing my point shoes, watching center stage. So that was my Friday night. So there's, you know, there's the there's the practicing on your own, there's the going to class, then there's the keeping up on your schoolwork and making sure that you're, you know, doing that and keeping your grades up. Um, and then, you know, in case this whole dancing career thing doesn't pan out. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then, you know, and then there's like the sewing the shoes and then the shoes start to break down, so you need to do something, you know, and then there's the breaking. It's just, it's a lot. So it's a lot of time commitment. But, um, you know, being a dancer, we are already know how to discipline our bodies. So it just means disciplining our time and disciplining our energies and making sure that we're staying focused on, you know, what we want to do and getting it done. <laughs> yeah. That's one thing about point shoes, too. Little kids, like, when you grow up, you should know how to sew your own point shoes from the get-go. Yes. I, I know girls that, like, are 17 years old and their mothers are still doing it. Don't, don't tweet them. If you're in the middle of a show, <laughs> if your shoe breaks, but like, mom, I'm so my shoe. You know, it's like that's another thing of like taking the initiative. Like, learn how to do it. Ask one of us. We know how to make sure it happens. And like, you know, shoes take a long time to break in. I also find that sometimes a week later, somebody's, you know, we're like, my shoes are dead. No, they're not. Like, you know, you have to think. Point shoes are expensive. And like, they're not, they're not cheap, you know, and there are things we can help you with so that we can help make them stay longer. But it's, yeah, like, you know, they're your point shoes. You should be able to take care of them. That's something that you should be proud of. You know what I mean? Like, I sew everything out of dental floss now. I sew my clothes out of dental floss. That's my title breath. You know, dental floss fixes everything. <laughs> and I, I, I love it. I dental floss, too, because, like, it's so much strong. It just, it's so strong. I'm like, yeah, totally, just, yeah. So that's the part of today too, is like if you don't know how to sew shoes yet, or if they don't, I know, well, if you have point shoes, you probably already know, like they taught you, right? Okay. But do, don't 
So someone will tell you to sew them one way, and then you'll come into my class, and I'll ah! So, um, but then I might tell you to sew them one way, and Katie might like them. So, um, like, check in, you know, ask around, because different people have different types of feet, so different people might need their shoes sewed differently, and also different shoes. Um, shoes, like, there's different types of shoes, and they all have a very different feel, and they're for different feet, and so, um, you know, the way I, I haven't got the greatest arches in the world, so I always sewed my shoes to really highlight my arch, so, um, or break, you know, because, I uh, um, so, but yeah, ask your different teachers, like, oh, is this okay, is this what you would do, and because there's different tricks, and different tricks work differently for different people, so there's a lot of different methods, so just ask around, and don't stop asking. You know, ask Katie, ask Kate, ask me, um, ask Miss Tiffany, you know, uh, do your research because something that works for you, and then try it out. You know, you're going to go through several pairs. So for this pair, I did the thing where I sewed it underneath. That didn't work out for me, you know. And so just try different ways on your different shoes until you find something that really makes you happy. Um, and I'm sorry, sorry. Yeah. The, the, the two, the moving up to two classes, yes. that's before point and then after point. Yes, definitely. The, the two the two technique classes are two ballets. That's what I mean. Not that tap isn't a technique class, but when I refer reference a technique class, I'm usually meaning a ballet class. Um, again, yeah, because they're getting stronger and working towards it. And again, I'm just I had <coughs> earlier as as a minimum because it's just the more repetitions you do, you know, the stronger, the, the faster you'll get there, the stronger you'll be in the more rewarding experiences. So yeah, for consideration for be on point, it's as a studio policy for the consideration is a two two and then from there, we say, you know, check it out more. And like, again, it's just like, if it's not for you, it's okay, too. We, you can still keep dancing. Because I don't, and that's the thing, too, is like, it get, they get to this age, and then, like, they're either like, I'm going on point, or I'm not dancing anymore. And that's something I don't want to see happen. Like, it's okay. If point shoes are not your thing, cool. You know? Like, if your child really loves, you know, tap dancing, and schedule doesn't allow, you know, two ballet classes, and they really want to keep that tap class, there's nothing wrong with that. Either it's just that this is we're laying out like I'm going point okay here's you know here's what's happening. But I definitely am very passionate. I had a conversation with another parent the other day too. Is that it? Just they get to that age, you know, that seven, six, seven, even fit. I mean, it's, it's hap I think it's happening earlier and earlier. That just every schedule are getting more intensified. That the kids are, you know, focusing on one thing over another earlier than um, I'd experienced in the past. But yeah, I want kids to keep dancing. So it's like if that going a point isn't their thing. It's okay. We still have lots and lots of great classes here in the studio. You know, and I mean, and we have like, you know, the advanced ballet, some of the older ballet classes. We have kids on point and kids mm -hmm. who aren't on point in the same class. And mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter. Recital. Okay. I mean, you've seen it before at recital. Some <laughs> kids on point, some kids aren't on point. It's fine, you know? And it shouldn't. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, because overall, I mean, a student shouldn't be on point before they're ready. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, going back to sewing the shoes, when you buy a pair of point shoes, is that something that you do immediately to adjust them to your feet and start figuring out how to sew them, or is that something as you wear them in, you see where you need the adjustments, or well, you have, sure you have you to sew them because um, they come, they don't come with elastic or nothing, so you have to, you have to sew the ribbons and the elastic on just so that you can put them on and wear them in class. Could you just kind of show us? Yeah, yeah she has hers too. Yeah. I, I don't know, people in my class, I mean, I, we sat down and I showed them exactly how to do it, so everybody knows it. I mean, that, that's something we can all do. And I'm going to jump in. I'm trying to jump back one quick step, though, too. Before you sew anything, though, you're going to want to make sure to show your instructor. Right. But, you know, <laughs> yeah, come, come bring yeah. your shoes in and make yeah. sure. Because when they're fitting, like, because we know their bodies, we know their feet, and, like, there's somebody who's just kind of looking at them. They're professional punchy fitters, but they don't know their... They don't know the student as well, so they come in and we look and we go, okay, yes, it's good alignment. It fits your foot nicely. It's, it it, it does the job. Okay, go home and play your shoes. You know, that's kind of thing. <laughs> I can pass this around. Just don't smell. Don't want to do the old. And when I say old, I haven't been on point. So like. when you get the shoe, it just comes plain by itself. When it has the brim and everything, but then you put it together as you're needed. You know, okay, with instruction. Thank you. 
Money saving tip, two things. Um, number one, I got my, I went through a few different types of shoes. Like when I was younger, I went through a few different types of shoes, and then I found one that really worked for me, and then I bought it in bulk on discount band supply. So I just bought like 10 pairs, and I obviously haven't went through them all yet. And then so, did you account for, did your feet kind of step grow? I was like 16 or 17 okay. when that happened, yeah. And it takes a while to yeah. get up there. <laughs> There's just so many different points. These days, that's why like it's good to bring them in for us to look at because I don't even know what some of them are made of anymore. Like it should just be wood. Now it's like plastic and aluminum and all this stuff. I don't know what's going on, but like there's just so many different kinds. Like black, there's like a whole family of like twenty. They're, they're like things. American Girl dolls now. They are Amelia and Vivian. And I'm like, what is this shoe? No. So yeah, <laughs> just oh, yeah. Kind of it used to be like. Serenade, um, Adagio, something else. They're like the legs, but now they're all, like, yeah, you know, it's just like, I don't know. Oh, best friend. Felicity. I don't know. I don't know. So. And one thing, too, is part of the process, too, is you're going to start off with a beginner shoe when, you know, your child goes in for a fitting. And a beginner shoe is just going to be more stable because, I mean, they're, they're balancing now in this, you know, this little tiny area. So a beginner shoe is going to have a harder shank. Um, it's going to generally, I find, wetter box. But I'm seeing some kids come in with a little narrower. Yeah. I, thought, I would take a narrower box because then it folds you better. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't know. I have really no feet. Well, for me, yeah. I always had like, when we were doing was the wider box. I have wide box. I have bunion. Really bad. So my middle toe is longer than the rest of them. So that's a whole lot of weight on that big old toe. <laughs> <laughs> so to this day, you still find it difficult to be at point. I mean, it's something that's just a normal thing, yeah, or do you get to the bad. point where, I mean, not that like, oh, I'm dying, but there's always going to feel some kind of... Uh, so, sometimes, yeah. It's just like if you're on it for hours, mm -hmm. like, if I teach a class, I'm on fine, but like if I'm rehearsing and then in three hours, yeah, there... I mean, I think that's like with anything, like, like if you are wearing a bad point, like heel or something, right. you know, and you're walking to that party, you know, like you're just, it's, it's going to hurt forever. You know, but it doesn't, you get to the point where you know if something's really wrong or if it's just what it is for the day. Like, you'll know if it's really, really painful, then talk to one of us about it and we can take a look and try and help you out. Or, you know, it's just, it'll be there. Like, in your first day, it really hurts. Like, in your first class of play shoes, it, like, really hurts. But then you get used to the pain. No, you kind of do. I mean, that's the story of a dancer's life. <laughs> it's like any athlete. I mean, your body is, I mean, this is yeah. what it is. The pain is just weak as sleep in the body. That's kind of <laughs> I love it. <laughs> when you talk about pain and bleeding, I mean, we're not talking about, we're just talking about adjusting and just, we're not talking about the damage. No, it's not, right. damage, it's not permanent damage. That's it's why it's great so they're old, yeah. they're old enough that their bones are yeah. set, so okay. they're not deforming your body. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no. I mean, it's like, it's calluses, it's blisters, it's, you know, it's bruising, sometimes losing a toenail, depending on how long you're up there. But it's, yeah, I mean, um, yeah. Or like, I mean, I just started out dancing, like, relatively recently, and I think I actually had less pain than most just because I was doing karate for, like, years so I already had the foot calluses that were necessary because you have to do a fair foot and whatever so it's just it's just like you know as you're starting out if your foot is like um, isn't doesn't have the calluses or isn't as tough yet and you need to be adjusting like that's when you'll have the bleeding and the pain but if you're it, it, it's just basically your foot getting used to it because a lot of that and all dancers should know that there is you know there's effortful pain and then there's like something is wrong with my body and import, it's important to learn to differentiate like my ankle is broken versus like my muscles are sore because I worked really hard um, and this, you know the latter is fine that's always going to be there but you know when you have so it's important as a dancer to start 
recognizing and learning the difference because don't come to your teacher, you know, if students come to their teacher every day, well, it hurts, well, yeah, it hurts, you know, versus something's actually wrong. We want to be able to help you, so. Right, and on that note, too, you're talking to the dancers, because it is important to know, like, what, what are they like? I'll definitely say, or generally we'll reference, you know, like, if it's a sharp shooting pain, you know, it's probably something more serious, or it's like a dull burning, like, because you're, you're, you're building your muscles, you know, you're weightlifting, you're lifting your own weight, you know, you're rising, you're taking it up and down. I mean, you're working those muscles, and you're not going to get stronger if you're just like, oh, you're looking good, you're looking good, you know, because of that. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's strengthening, so like the burning, but it's, it's important to know the different types of pain. Generally, burning, kind of dull, like uncomfortable, but if it's persistent, like anything, then it's definitely something you should bring to your teacher. You shouldn't, like, keep working through it because it probably means there's just something, maybe mm -hmm. needs some help doing something. Katie, um, or Katie rather, <laughs> when you say you bought in bulk, was that at a, at a point where you were pretty sure your feet weren't going to get any bigger? Like as a boy, man, for instance, my feet didn't grow after the ninth grade. Mm -hmm. Women stop growing, I think, when we have, we get puberty, like, which is a little younger than boys, so it should be sooner, but yeah. Mm -hmm. And Miss Katie, what mm -hmm. shall the dancers do when they're like at home where they don't have a bar? What types of exercise should they do? Mm-hmm. Definitely, I'll go work with the TheraBand and actually when I jump back one step, I am not, unless they're an advanced dancer, I don't like the girls being home doing point exercises by themselves. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I don't want them on the, on the point shoes dancing at home. So, I don't know, maybe we should talk about that more too, but I just personally, because I don't want them to, you know, like if the new new point shoes, the first time going on point, don't want them breaking them in well, because once the shoe is, is broken in, I mean, it's it's staying that way, you can't, you can't like make it go back. Um, so exercises for the feet, yeah, I mean, working with the TheraBand, I mean, the exercises of, you know, picking things up with your toes, you know, you know the flex, stretch it, all stretching is always something too, and it's something we look at, as an overall dancer, you need to be, you know, you need to be strong, you need to be flexible, and you need to have good alignment, so that, those are all important mm -hmm. things too, so yeah, I mean, not just, you focus on your feet as well as your flexibility too, because, I mean, as they get advanced too, you need to have the extension. I mean, we're starting to fly around and turn, you know, turn on point shoes and do all this fun, crazy stuff. So you need to have the flexibility as well as the strength, which is personally why I'm like, we are so much even stronger than athletes because you know you're strong and flexible. You don't just run around. So. Officer flex. <laughs> yeah. But that that too is why you know the two the two class minimum because. And I was actually just thinking about this the other day, um, even as, you know, a professional dancer, like if I give myself a class, which I do from time to time, I always give myself the same class. And, you know, by taking someone else's class, they're going to notice things that you're doing wrong. They're going to give you different <coughs> combinations that work your body differently. They're going to work your brain differently. So it's just, I mean, it's important to practice at home, but that's why it's so important also to get into class. Just so that someone else is noticing, like, oh, you're doing this wrong, and, you, you know, especially when you're younger, you don't even know that your butt is sticking all the way out, you know, so hopefully you do. It is something that I like to have here at the studio is the different teachers. I mean, by having different teachers, they are going to, it's not like you're missing something. It's just people focus on different things, and so everyone has a different focus. So, I mean, there's stylistic things that maybe like, well, she said this and she said that. There's a little bit of a, even it's an art, it's an art form. So it's not, it's not precise. It's not going to be, you know, exact every single time. But yeah, different teachers are going to focus on different things. And so, yeah, getting yourself into class with the different teachers is important. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just with the like um, two class minimum thing, I know probably just because I'm kind of in a weird, <clears throat> awkward place with where. Um, I am with ballet, I, I did kind of have trouble finding classes that were the right level for me. And I mean, even like in the classes that I'm in now, like one of them is definitely, like the people in it are much younger than I am, but because Miss Christine is just a really great teacher, I don't actually care. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, I, so like I still feel like I'm now being really challenged and working really hard and everything. But like, I just, I know I had some trouble figuring out which class I was supposed to be in. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I just, like, I feel like that was kind of an obstacle for me to, mm -hmm. to like, having the um, number of classes that I like to be in. Gotcha. Definitely. Um, I'm, if I can use it as an example, I'm really proud of Leah. She's come back to dance after a break, yeah. right? So I'm really proud of her for her dedication. 
And it is a unique circumstance to <coughs> in terms of joining us. I'd like to help you, you know, find more too. Yeah. On that same note, I want to say too is don't always compare ages. I mean, you're not going to cut to the three year old. I mean, you have technique levels, but it should be more about your personal journey than yeah. she's taller than me. She's shorter than me, she's younger than me, that sort of thing. I mean, we're going to have appropriate parameters on the age and, and experience level, but don't let that become a limiting thing. I know it's sometimes easier to be said than done, because I'm like, well, she's you like know, half my age, age and she's, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. it should be about your personal journey, too. And that's like, if you go to a summer program, they, they put you in levels. It's mm -hmm. not about your age level well most of the time, it's about where you are as a dancer. Like when I went, you know, I was with 19 year olds and I was with eight year olds. You know, it just depends on where you are <coughs> as like a dancer and that's okay. Like you should really be worried about, you know, my, I always just wanted to do better than everybody else. Like that's just what, you know, I tried to do, you know, so beat the 19 year old, beat the eight year old. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>